Is he mad at me, sees me? Is he mad at me, sees me? Is he mad at me, sees me? Hey everyone, today we're going to learn all about measurement conversions. I'm going to be walking you through customary conversions and metric conversions, and we're going to be using charts, patterns, proportional fractions. So if you want to go back and watch my proportion video as my last one, feel free to go check that out first and then come over to this video. So let's get started. Okay, so I want to show you a really nice way to organize converting units as we're learning about it. And I always like to start with a given measurement. So any measurement that I give you or units that I give you goes here. Then this section in the middle is to write down what you know about that type of conversion. And I'll show you that in just a second. And then the last column is just the equivalent measure. So in this case, we want to convert it into yards, uh, feet to yards. And so I've left a blank here for when we find the answer, the equivalent measure to 24 feet. So the next thing you ask yourself is just, what do you know about feet and yards? So some of you might have it memorized, some of you may not. So one thing that's great about converting is that usually you either have a conversion chart from your teacher or at home, or you can also look all of these up, so that's great. So if you have some sort of a conversion chart, then you know that three feet equals one yard. And so I write that down. That's gonna be super important for this problem. Uh, but then if I didn't have a chart, I just would type in, you know, how many feet are there in a yard? And so it's really easy to find that information. Okay, so the next thing I would do is just, you know, make sure that chart is there to kind of keep referring back to, then I would go ahead and make a proportion out of it. So we have feet to yards. So we know, I'm going to plug in this information. So three feet to one yard. That is the ratio or proportion. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and plug in that you know, we want 24 feet, so I'm gonna definitely make that a numerator here, 24 feet. And this is the, you know, the mystery we don't know down here. Okay, so we're looking for the yards that are equivalent to 24 feet. Okay, so now what I love about proportions is now it just looks like a, equivalent fraction problem that you're so used to doing from the last couple of years. And so now we just look for a pattern, right? How do I get from three feet to 24 feet? Yeah, times eight. And when you do something to the numerators, what do you do to the denominators? Yeah, you do the same thing times eight times eight. And what is one times eight? Yeah, eight. So that means that 24 feet is equivalent to eight yards. Okay, great job. I love putting this in a proportion because it just makes finding the pattern so easy. All right, here's our next problem. I'm gonna do all of these the same way because I feel like this is so helpful to have the chart up here, then we make a proportion. Okay, so I've got, I went over to the metric system because I want you to see a little bit of both. So 20 liters, and I wanna know how many milliliters is equivalent to that. So now let's, let's fill in the conversion information. What do you know about liters and milliliters? Yeah, once again, some of us just know it off the top of our heads. Some of us have a chart we can look at. Some of us can look it up online too. So one liter equals, you got it, 1,000 milliliters. 
All right, now let's make a proportion. So liters to milliliters. So once again, we have that information right here that we can just plug in one to 1,000. And you're probably gonna notice if you haven't already in the past that the metric system is so much easier to work with because everything is based on you know, things like 10, 100, 1,000. It just makes all of the math very easy. Okay, so now let's set up the rest of this proportion. So we have 20 liters. I always pay attention to the units because I don't wanna accidentally do this. You know, it's not 20 milliliters, it's 20 liters. So I just wanna make sure I'm being careful about where I place things. All right, and then once again, I'm looking for this amount right here. So now I want you to pause the video, see if you can figure out the pattern going on and how we can get that amount of milliliters. All right, let's check your work. So to get from one to 20, yep, times 20, same thing to the denominator times 20. And I love mental math problems like this because I've got 20 groups of a thousand. So how much is that? Yep, 20,000. Oh, let me switch markers. 20,000. Okay, so then I'm going to put that up here. 20,000 milliliters is equivalent to 20 liters. Great job. All right, now I've got a problem for you where we're gonna start with 6,000 grams and we wanna convert over to kilograms. So first things first, we need the conversion rate here. So what do you know about grams and kilograms? Okay, we've got 1,000 grams equals one kilogram. Okay, so let's set up that proportion, grams to kilograms. And that means we have 1,000 to one. And then we have 6,000. I'm making sure to put that up with the grams. And then here's our mystery amount that we need to know. All right, why don't you pause the video and see if you can find how many kilograms are equivalent to 6,000 grams. All right, so you may have noticed something a little different about this problem. So most of them we've been having a one to, you know, three or a one to 1,000 ratio. This one is the opposite. So we're gonna see something kind of interesting in this one. So, you know, we could, find the pattern going this way, right, and this way. We could also find a pattern going this way. How do you get from a thousand down to one? Yeah, divide by a thousand. So, so far we've been doing multiplying, and this one is the opposite, division. So, and we're gonna talk more about that in just a little bit. So then, let's come over here. We could also divide by 1,000 over here. So what is 6,000 divided by 1,000? You got it, six. Okay, so whether you, you know, went this way or down with the fractions, either way, you found a good pattern to get you that mystery number. So that means that six kilograms is equivalent to 6,000 grams. Okay, so now I just wanna ask you, how can you tell when to multiply and when to divide? Okay, so some of you might be saying that when you're going from these smaller units, and there's more of them, right, down to this bigger unit and there's less of them, then we're dividing. Okay, but if you're going from a, I'm gonna erase this down here. 
if you're going from the larger unit and you're converting it into more smaller units, then you're multiplying by that 1000 to go this direction. So you kind of just have to think of what's happening with the unit size and what's happening with the number two. Look for the correct pattern. We're going from six to 6,000, so it's times 1,000. Then here we're going from 6,000 to six, so we're dividing by 1,000. Okay, great job today. I hope this video helps you in your math class or at home. See you next time.